Okay, well, I'm Simon Manning, um, and we are the New World Coordinates. Let's get everyone on the record. Yeah, Mark Kinsman with Mortensen. Uh, I'm Peter Mitev with NBBJ. I'm Logan Smith from Bevel. Sweet. And uh, together we, uh, we sought to solve a problem that we all see in our daily lives. We come from architecture and then have sort of pivoted into various technology roles. And so this application was something that we, uh, we kind of sought to solve an issue that we saw a lot. Uh, Damien, could you jump us to the next one? So the problem that we're seeing is that uh, construction sites are these complex three-dimensional or even four-dimensional um, puzzles. There's all this material moving in and out. There's all kinds of people and tasks that need to be coordinated. And um, tracking all of these things is fine on a two-dimensional screen, but uh, to sort of take it that next step and really uh, streamline that process of coordinating issues and tracking issues, uh, we decided to deploy the HoloLens as a way of helping us navigate and explore uh, the three-dimensional job site in addition to working in two dimensions. So this is our team. Um, I'll kind of go over what which each of our was contributed, but um, there's Mark. He was he was responsible for all the back end development, making sure all of our data packets that we were sending from the Hololens and Unity uh, made it made their way to the website. Um, Peter is a full stack developer. He was sort of managing the, the back end and making sure that well, not the front, yeah, front end, front end, um, making sure that our, our sort of web interface was accessible and easy to use. Um, that's me. I was sort of in charge of the user experience and kind of what that user flow was uh, looked like. There's Tito, our, our 3D artist, who modeled this space and allowed us to uh, sort of align our BIM model to uh, a real space and demonstrate it. And then um, finally, Logan, who was the lead HoloLens developer and kind of made all of uh, tied all of the AR portion together. Um, so our team really, and I don't know if you guys. If you guys want to jump in, feel free. Um, so this is definitely pulling together pieces from previous hackathon projects. Um, in uh, a few weeks ago in San Francisco, I had a project called QA AR that was for walking the site and finding the problems and noting them. Um, that was on an iPad, and it was uh, not at all connected. It was just for making note of those issues or questions. Um, and then wanted to take it further by porting it and actually connecting it to anything so that it can provide real value. Um, if you go to the next slide, I think that might be the interface. Well, let's, 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 oh, sorry. Yeah. So uh, then the other piece of that, I did a project uh, a while back at a hackathon. Um, that was the team Say What? And we did voice notations in VR. So we were taking things, bringing them up to the cloud, and then displaying them. So we figured that mostly these two projects could be married in such a way where we're now in AR and we're persisting all that data. All right, now we're on the interface. Um, so uh, you will check out the back end here in a second, but the interface essentially um, pulls from Mark's uh, back end. And so every time somebody makes a marker or a notation or an issue in the HoloLens, um, it gets basically pushed to Mark's API. And then my front end is uh, pulling that data um, and so you're kind of seeing a basic visualization of that. So we have just like a super simple list view. Um, and then uh, we prototyped this plan view. We didn't end up um, getting the actual plan of this room in here just because um, normalizing coordinates, uh, basically mapping this two dimensional fictitious image to the coordinate space of a world model was just a little bit uh, more scaling and math that I could do in a tired state. Um, but so yeah, you interact with it in either way. And then uh, the prototype was that you could also then make a change in this environment as well, push it back to the API and the HoloLens person would see that actualized. So we're going a little bit from what the finished product might look like uh, when you're consuming it to the how we do it. So the next slide is our API that we created. So um, being able to communicate between Unity and our web, we did a um, database in the cloud. We tried to do a little bit more of the ops piece there to make it really robust and scalable, and then um, made it easy to, to maintain because we knew once we finished this hackathon, all three of the different companies here are probably going to want to make their own instance of it. So we'll uh, make that really easy for ourselves to spin up. Um, and then that'll just handle all the communication between both groups, uh, the Unity and the website. Um, if you could click that So 
so that we could actually demonstrate this, we took a video in here earlier. The large screen is what I'm seeing through the HoloLens. So you have the, uh, the BIM model kind of transparent so that you can still see the real world but see what's supposed to be there and then mark up the individual elements. Having a really, really streamlined, um, just two clicks basically by the time you've gathered that information um, so that you can move on with your job quickly. I marked up an issue there with Damon, so. And the idea would be that each of these markups, when you uh, select the markup and then specify what type, that shows up as a dot on the plan and is color-coded with relevant data as well. And it connects there right to the uh, API and is queryable. And Tito, who's not here, made those really cool icons, by the way. Um, go to the next one. Yeah, well, okay, so maybe I'll talk about his bit. So he, Tito's unfortunately not here. He's a really talented uh, graphic artist, and he helped us uh, prototype these icons for Unity. Um, and he spent a lot of time animating them as well, so you kind of really get that engaging feedback, and you know whether something was successful or whether the issue you just created is not going to the back end or the interface. So um, that was his work in modeling the space up there and creating the interface, and then that at the far left is what you see where we had the um, inject into Unity to make the communication from Unity to the API to the um, front end. Presentation. Thank you. Uh, amazing. Uh, industry standards. Anything I noticed you guys were starting to transfer some data. Anything you guys were looking at as far as stuff that's is there anything out there or like was that a conversation at all? Uh, uh, very briefly, ultimately, a lot of these systems we already have for doing issue management. So the idea is that this could be a lightweight thing, but then we'd probably pump it into other systems. And those, so we'd have to just follow their standards. So it's not necessarily a, a nationwide industry standard, but if we're going to Procore, we're going to have to use their issue management style if we're going to use, you know, different ones like that. So you, you really redesigned or, or came up with a, 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 a uh, next-gen UI UX for some of the existing Ultimately, it has to wind up on those platforms, right? Like, um, this is a great tool for somebody to use, but at the end of the day, it has to go into the Procore or whatever platform the CM is using. So um, by him building the database in the way that he did and creating the API to allow it to be flexible in a certain respect, we were hoping that that is something that, yeah, can be Good. exactly done. So mostly what we're focusing on is a model case for creating new content that's simpler than you know, seeing something, taking a picture, going back to your office, trying to create that on the web, or some of them have mobile applications, so having your iPad for doing it, but this is really simple, click, click, maybe say something, and, and it goes into the system to be tracked. So you were also be able to capture uh, audio, your, your speech? Well, that was on uh, something we were going to do, because we did it in the last project, we were going to pull that forward, but we didn't quite get to this hackathon. Okay. Yeah, a lot of the speech to text um, a lot of the speech-to-text stuff is built into the HoloLens, so yeah. like, for example, Cortana uh, can handle a lot of that. So we focus on mainly the minimum viable products okay. aspect. Fair enough. Good. Okay. I guess I, because you're talking about coordinates, and you talked about the issue being coming back on the 2D plans, like there's a lot into, you know, how you get any thoughts on like how you would reference that back to yeah, so the, the prototypical thing, and the code exists in there, it's just not really tied together. So I'm using um, D3JS, I'm sure some of you are familiar with it, um, and I'm using their scaling feature to basically, we get the four corner points from the model, and then we get the four corner points of the little image, and then we kind of take, we compare the x's to the x's, y's to the y's, we find a ratio or a multiplier that when applied to one will give you the other, um, and then that was the model. But didn't test it, didn't tie it together, so that might work really great in my head, but I haven't slept very much, so. <laughs> so there's a small amount of setup that you would use to create that initial image that you're going to be doing, in which you'll input your coordinates plane, basically, that you'll use to associate everything with. But can you get the dimensions of a viewport on a drawing? Yeah. Because that, I didn't know that. That's, I didn't thought about that. Yeah. So also, all of the coordinates in there are being stored uh, relative to a known point in the model. So we can also then, if we need to pull this information down into Revit, or any of the other systems that we're using, it can relate to what the building already, uh, the coordinates of the, of the building in any of the softwares. Oh yeah, last one, what scanning has to be done in the field in order to do what we did? Like in this exercise, what pre-scanning or anything 
Yeah. So none. The one of the features that didn't end up coming together was the automatic registration uh, with markers. Um, and so in this case, we do a uh, manual alignment. So we come into the room, we're like, okay, we're in this room, and then we drag the model and put it into place, and then we're already aligned because we have the BIM model and we have the true space. Yeah, the, the only reason that Tito went through and measured this space was so that we would have a representation of, uh, like if we had a Revit model of this building, we would have used that instead. So it's really just, once we can get that real world model lined up, now we have a consistent coordinate grid, a new set of world coordinates for the model, for BIM, and with AR. So. <laughs> That's why he's a private manager. That was his role. Uh, but, uh, finally lived it up. <laughs> All right, thank you so much. Yeah.